Some of the most impressive structures ever built by humans are dams. Typically concrete or earthen structures, dams block entire river channels, controlling the flow of water in order to generate electricity, aid irrigation for farming, control flooding, and assist with ship navigation. In the United States, dams have dramatically altered the landscape, turning entire river systems into mechanized systems of controlled lakes. And in the process, the dams have turned deserts into productive farmland and provided clean, cheap electricity for a growing population. But in recent decades, concerns about the profound negative effects of dams have grown, and a movement calling for their removal is getting ever louder. This is Built World, a channel about architecture, urban design, and infrastructure. And today, we're talking about dams and the increasing calls for their removal. The Colombian Snake River watershed in the Pacific Northwest provides a useful case study on both the benefits and environmental impacts of dams. There are 18 major dams on this river system. Together, the dams on the Columbia and Snake Rivers have transformed the Pacific Northwest with the electricity, irrigation, and flood control they provide. But at the same time, these dams have been devastating to the region's environment, and particularly for one of its most critical components, salmon. Salmon have historically migrated from the Pacific Ocean into watersheds all over the Northwest via the Columbia, Snake, and thousands of smaller rivers. Scientists often refer to rivers as a circulatory system of the landscape, moving sediments downriver and nutrients upriver. And much of this nutrient flow depends on the migration of salmon. But the construction of dams disrupted this natural flow. Before white settlement, it's estimated 10 to 16 million salmon return to the Columbia River annually to spawn. Today, that number is estimated to be around 1 million and a major cause of this reduction is dams. The dams block the fish in their tracks, turning a once free-flowing river system into a tightly controlled and engineered machine. Environmental regulations now require dam operators to mitigate their negative effects on fish. This comes in the form of fish ladders, or building things like fish hatcheries, and even loading young salmon into trucks to bypass the dams. But these measures are expensive and produce little tangible results for the cost. Increasingly, however, calls to remove dams and return rivers to their natural state are growing. In the past two decades, hundreds of dams have been removed in the United States. And many of these projects have been driven by economics as well as environmental reasons. Primarily, removal projects have been focused around small, aging dams, where the potential liability of failure, or the cost to maintain or upgrade obsolete technology, outweigh the profits that can be made from their electricity. But two recent projects have changed the conversation around dam removal. Both the Condit and Elwha River dam removals in the early 2010s were the largest and most ambitious ever attempted in the U.S. In the case of the Condit Dam, environmental regulations required the dam's owner to install a fish ladder in order to renew the dam's operating license. But it was shown that the costs of this upgrade were greater than the revenues the company could generate on the dam's electricity. It was decided that the dam would be intentionally breached allowing the White Salmon River to flow once again unimpeded. Shortly thereafter, the removal of the Elwha and Glines Canyon dams surpassed Condit in both complexity and scale. Nearby tribes like the Elwha Clallam had long pushed for the removal of the two dams on the Elwha River in Washington's Olympic Peninsula in order to restore salmon runs in a landscape they've inhabited for thousands of years. With the backing of environmental groups like the Sierra Club, the federal government approved the demolition of the dams in 1992. But years of pushback and then years of planning delayed the project's start until 2011. The dams were slowly demolished over a two-year period, a technique known as notch and release, so as not to release all the sediment that had built up behind the dams in a single explosive event. Simultaneously, restoration efforts backed by the National Park Service have been ongoing to restore the dam sites and rewild the Elwha into something resembling its pre-dam state. 
Proponents of dam removal continue to think bigger. A project on the Klamath River in Oregon and California has recently won full approval to move forward. The $500 million project will involve the removal of the J.C. Boyle, Copco 1, Copco 2, and Iron Gate dams on the river. Expected to begin in 2024, it would surpass Elwha as the largest ever attempted in the U.S. These three projects have pushed the envelope for the scope and complexity of dam removal and have made massive strides toward re-establishing the ecological richness of the region. But still, the juggernaut dams on the Columbia and Snake River remain. For years, numerous proposals have been floated to remove four major dams on the Snake River. The Lower Granite, Little Goose, Lower Monumental, and Ice Harbor dams have been identified as candidates for removal because of their high costs to maintain, relatively low power output, and impacts on salmon. Yet opposition is fierce from farmers and utility customers who benefit from the dams. In 2020, a $33 billion package was proposed that would include removing these four dams by dismantling the earthen berms that are adjacent to the concrete dam structures. But the package would also establish an agency consisting of state and tribal leaders to manage salmon, as well as set aside funds for infrastructure that can replace the electrical generation, transportation, and irrigation benefits the dams provide. In late 2022, a federal report also recommended the project, but it still faces a long uphill battle. When it comes to dam removal, one important consideration is that dams are one of the largest sources of carbon-free electricity. So despite the environmental benefits that dam removal may bring, the electricity they provide still must be replaced. Which is why to many, the concept of dam removal, especially for behemoth, major power-producing dams, is still almost unthinkable. But what's been proven with these smaller dam removal projects is that in cases where energy production is negligible, the benefits of their removal are clear. Like many 20th century projects that helped build the United States, dams have provided both widespread benefits and negative unintended consequences. But the growing slate of successful dam removal projects perhaps shows a new way forward, an opportunity to radically transform the landscape by deconstructing human interventions and allowing rivers, salmon, and the landscape around us all to be unimpeded once again.